Ben, Coach Brown was in here just talking about tackling and this week it being a lot better and not missing tackles. Just go kind of take us through last week of practice and, and, and the mentality of we're going to go out and, and, and tackle and kind of gang tackle. Well, the emphasis of practice uh, throughout the week, even this week, is always getting to the ball. And, you know, getting to the ball, hustling, everybody just flying to it. It's, you know, it conditions the running lane, you know, allows the runner to, like, you feel me, not go too much further. So, you know, getting to the ball and, you know, wrapping up throughout practice, even just thudding up the scout team guys, that was probably the big difference. Yeah. Ben, as somebody who practices against Malik uh, all the time, watches him play, uh, he puts up huge rushing yard numbers. What is it, you know, that makes him so effective? Is it ability to change speeds, change direction, his, his speed, his ability to anticipate plays? What, what makes him so good? Now, I'm going to tell you this story, not to try to embarrass myself, but it was one time during, I think it was, say, spring ball, early fall camp, and it was just like, you know, I, I, think, I think when I approach players, you know, even teammates, on our, people on our team, I just look at them and I'll be like, all right, they're just another human. But that Malik kid, he, he's something different. I was going to go chase him one time, and it's like he'd take an angle, and then he'll, like, take another angle so quick, and it'd be, like, hard to change directions. Even myself, I, like I said, I fell on my face one time trying to tackle him. So <laughs> it was bad in general, but, you know. Malik is just a, it's his speed, his speed and ability to change the directions. That's the biggest thing for him. Ben, you came in as a highly rated recruit last year, um, but spent the year redshirting. How big was that that stretch for you to, to kind of take your time, learn the system, and prepare for this year? Uh, the biggest thing for me, uh, especially coming in, it would be like, I could say, you know, I came in and my expectations for myself was already high. And I was just like, I want to be that guy right away. But it didn't come down to be that. It was just I had to accept my role last year, you know, learn the scheme of the defense, you know, take my ability that, you know, I'm a kid from Chicago, you know, football, we don't play football year round. You know, people from the South, they play football year round. So just that, you know, just that uh, being behind the curve just a little bit right there and just always staying in tune, always staying in tune, always listening, always wanting to be better within myself that whole year. I didn't take a year off. It was just, y'all ain't see me for a year. So physically, mentally, I prepared myself for this opportunity I got right now, and I'm trying to make the most of it. From the first game at Syracuse until this past week, how much have you improved in just the speed of the game? And as you said, you were working, but game speed is different, is it not? And, and how much do you feel like you've improved in, in the game in the first four weeks? Uh, you know, me, myself, you know, being out there for the first time against Syracuse, like I said uh, in my previous interview, that I was just amped up. I was just like, you know, in the height of the moment. I would say as the weeks has went on and, you know, this past game is in UCF, I just calmed down. I played within myself. I got to, like, you know, start being able to disguise more, start being able to show the quarterback different looks and stuff. So, you know, being able to just hone in on those details, especially with my young self at 19, if I can continue to build on them skill sets by the time I'm a senior or even a junior or even next year, it's just going to look even better. So just little stuff like that I try to, like, remember. And then also playing within the scheme, always, you know, doing my job and assignment and make sure I do it well. I guess, Ben, for you guys, how much does a win against UCF and the way – or USF, excuse me, and the way that you're able to do that kind of give you confidence heading back into conference action? Can you repeat it one more time? Just the way that you guys were able to shut USF down and, you know, they were averaging, I think, 202 yards rushing and you guys held them to – think a little over 100 in total offense. How much does something like that give you confidence heading back into, you know, ACC action and going against Boston College? Uh, I learned here you celebrate all your wins. And, you know, that right there alone, y'all just showed what everybody doing what they're supposed to do. Everybody just running, hustling to the ball. Everybody trusting within the coaching. That right there alone just displayed itself against USF. So, you know, right there alone, it's just a confidence booster as a whole team around. So, you know, going back in, and approaching BC, we take what we learned against UCF, FSU, and USF, take the good and the bad, and you know just apply it to this week as well. As a player, and, and I asked Coach about this, um, in terms of how he deals with uh, or holds players accountable for penalties, and uh, you know the difference between, I guess, holding you accountable and, and calling you out. As a player, how do you feel ab about that when you see yourself commit a penalty on, on film and, you know, the coach is making a note about it. I mean, mm. do, you, do you feel like you need to be held accountable or, you know, I mean, do you take it any any personal? Well, 
Cosat and Coach Brown, you know, they pre they preach player led program. So before the coach even get on you, a player gonna get on you. So that right there alone, I don't want to let my teammate down. Let alone, I don't want my own teammate yelling at me. So it's obviously a big accountability. I almost had a, a offside against FSU, and you can see me on film just clap my hands because I'm like, dang. You know, I get pulled out the next play, but you know that don't affect me mentally because coach put me back in. I make a play the next time, come back out. So that alone, like our coaches get on us, but our players, our teammates gonna get on us before the coaches get on us. You mentioned being a boy from Chicago and you don't play year round up there. How how do you become the player you are in Chicago when you only play? I mean, obviously you're not gonna you're not gonna play much outside in the winter. I mean. You know, of course, you know, we got our 707. We got our 707 programs out there. So it's all about the want to. Like, how bad do you really want it? How bad do I really want to get better? I had my dad pushing me when I was younger, you know, always staying in tune, always doing this, always doing that. You know, he ain't never really praised me too much on what I did good, but he always reminded me, hey, you messed up right there. You messed up right here. So you feel me? So just reliving those, the mistakes in the back of my head always prepared me for the next opportunity. And then also, you know, I come in, I come from a, a Catholic school, a private Catholic school. So, you know, right then alone, being at Mount Carmel, we getting up at five, six in the morning to go work out. You know, most high schoolers ain't really doing that. So me going to them workouts and be like, all right, I'm going to lock in. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. It's just, it just kind of carried me and made me better than my environment, I'd say. Thank you.